Good morning, church. Welcome to our online service. Welcome to the first service of 2022. How weird is it to say that? Come on. Welcome to our online gathering. We are so grateful that you're joining us this morning. And uh, I'm especially grateful uh, because today is um, an an amazing day. Uh, It's also a bittersweet day um, as this is my final message uh, as I am concluding this transition uh, out of Bridge South Bay. So thank you for joining in uh, as we start the year strong. It's also uh, just been amazing to look back and reflect and see all the amazing things that God has done over the last five and a half years. And so it's an honor to be able to bring this message today. So uh, let's dive right on in. I want you to grab your Bibles. Let's go into Romans chapter 15. As you're turning there, I'm going to give us a quick little summary of this book, what we're going to be looking at. Okay, so Romans is written by Paul, and, uh, and the whole purpose is as an encouragement to the Christian church at Rome, uh, whose congregation Paul hoped to eventually visit on his way to Spain. Uh, However, there was uh, tension that had now started arising within the house churches, where there was kind of division of like the Jewish Christian house churches and then the Gentile Christian house churches. And what Paul is trying to do in this letter is address both of these people and give a, uh, a persuasion to pursue after unity and to give them a hope in Christ. And so we're going to see how uh, Paul addresses this. And come on, how many know that this is a word for us today, that that we know that there has been division that has been sown into our churches, uh, that we have seen even over the last two years, so many people turn against one another uh, out of differences of opinion uh, or belief. And now I believe this is the year to pursue for a new hope, a hope that's not rooted in humanity, but a hope that is truly rooted in Jesus. Okay, so let's pick up in chapter 15. Verse 4, it says this, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus. Verse 6, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, we just give you this time this morning. And Lord, we have anticipation that as we start this new year, that as we are looking to do new things and have new goals, Lord, would you give a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit where there is a new desire for unity in Christ Jesus, that we would turn from pursuing after our humanistic ways or our humanistic wisdom and knowledge, but Father, that we would put our trust, we would put our faith, but we would also put our hope in you. So we give you this time this morning, pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So when I uh, think about this passage, right to begin with, there's one thing that stands out to me, and it's picking up uh, in verse 6, and it says that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One voice. When I think of one voice, I can't help but think of being at like a football game or a, a baseball game where there's thousands and thousands of people in the stands. Now, it's just chaos, right? People are cheering. People are hooting and hollering. They're doing those things. But there's moments during the game when all of a sudden everybody with one voice start chanting either defense or or various offensive chants to try and encourage their team. Now, could you imagine if everybody was like, Hey, you know what? I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm just going to do my own thing, and I'm going to cheer how I want to cheer because this is how I want to cheer. And there was no unity. Our team would never get the message across that they had a crowd that had their backs. It would just be chaos. There would just be dismay. And I think that when I look at this passage and I, and I look at what's happening here with the conversation about what does one voice sound like? 
Well, could it be that this year, as a church, when we are putting our hope in Jesus, as we are trying to realign ourselves for a new season, maybe, just maybe, we need to alter who and where we put our hope in and how we do that collectively as the church. Maybe it's time that we get back to one voice, one pursuit, one understanding that we no longer allow for seeds of division to come in that are dictated on humanistic emotion or humanistic interpretation. However, we look to the scriptures, we look to seeking Jesus, and we actually come together as a body unified under who Jesus is. Remember, Jesus didn't come just to be a good guy on this earth and be an example. Jesus came to be the incarnate word of God. He didn't just do things in the Bible. He was the living word that is the Bible. And we cannot have dispute anymore within the church about the scriptures on, in terms of whether it's valid or whether this passage is relevant for today anymore. No, it is either all relevant or none of it is relevant. And we as a church have to get back to this place of being unified because we will not be able to abide in a unified hope apart from the foundation of understanding the power, the truth, of God's word. And so when we look at this, when we look at what Paul's already starting here in, in chapter 15, it is so important for us to grab hold of the encouragement here that he desires for the Christian church, for those who call themselves to be followers of Jesus, to be rooted in the scriptures, to know the Bible, to have conversation, to seek truth, to have the Holy Spirit be our teacher, to be the one that guides us to revelation. I believe that unity will come when the church at large commits to a daily surrendering to the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the same hope in Christ. The title of my message today is, Where Has the Hope Gone? Now, it sounds negative. It sounds uh, obviously very questioning of the church. But I don't want to leave us in this place of just feeling like all the hope is gone. Because let's be real. Over the last two years, with everything that's transpired, I think it would be very safe to say that many of us, if not all of us, have found ourselves in seasons, situations, times, months, Maybe it's been the whole two years. I don't know. Where you yourself can't actually identify where your hope is. Yeah, you preach it out loud of I follow God and I love God and I believe all this. But yet fear has consumed you to the point where you, what you proclaim you have hope in is not actually what you have hope in. What you proclaim is where your hope desires and rides and this is where you are going to pursue after is not actually where it's at. Where has the hope gone? Maybe, this is a, an even better question, who has your hope? Who have you placed your hope in? Maybe you're somebody today listening to this message saying, you know what, I feel like God has left me high and dry that I was hopeful that God would come through in this moment that I needed him most and he didn't. So therefore, I'm now gonna place my hope in someone or something else. Maybe throughout the course of this season with the political dynamic that's happening, with the, uh, what's happening with uh, the, the sicknesses of coronavirus and such, maybe the hope has changed from the person of Jesus Christ to a person here on this earth. Maybe a government official. Maybe it's a social media account that makes you feel good because they say all the things you want to hear. Hello. All I know is that if we as the church are going to say that we are going to be unified, man, then we all have to come together and realign ourselves 
to dying to our flesh, to what we want, to what we think should happen, and truly get on our hands and knees and cry out to God and say, God, here we are. Whatever you desire, we will do. Whatever you say, we will follow. I believe that we will see such a transformation in the church when Christians no longer preach a message or a theology that is more rooted in their emotions and their own agenda, and they get back to an understanding of what the Bible is actually teaching us, and they are truly rooted and abiding in the hope that Christ has offered us. And that, my friends, is where the power will be. Take a look at our, our central verse for today. It's in verse 13. Catch what is happening here. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You cannot abide in hope apart from joy, peace, and belief. You must be a person that is receiving the peace of Christ, that has a jo the joy of the Lord is within your heart, and that you have a belief that is planted on the rock of God's word rather than the fallible sand of what this earth has to offer us. When we will be a people that abide in Christ's peace, in his joy, and are filled with belief from the Holy Spirit, that right there is the essence of hope. Anything else, it's not truly hope. Because anything else apart from Christ's peace, his joy, and being filled with belief from the Holy Spirit is false. It's actually hopelessness, not being hopeful. And so don't convince yourself that you are full of hope while still lacking in belief. You cannot have hope in Christ and not also be abiding in his peace and his joy. Hope is when your belief is fueled by Christ's joy and peace. Hopelessness is when your belief is fueled by fear and trust in the world. Now, you could be listening to these things and think, well, this kind of just sounds a little bit like optimism versus pessimism. But I want to give this breakdown real quick. Optimism is simply this. When your belief is fueled by positivity, good thinking, right? Gonna hope for the best, right? But it's just kind of a aimless, oh, catch it like a Hail Mary toss out there. Pessimism is when your belief is fueled by negativity, it's just really those two things. There's no allowance of Christ's intervention in the midst of that. So the difference between hope and optimism is one is rooted in Christ and one is rooted in nothing. It's just positivity. The difference between hopelessness and pessimism is one is actually fueled in, in fear Right? And, and the belief that, that the world could actually satisfy your needs. The other one is just rooted in negativity. So it's very important for us to understand if we are going to discover where hope is, we need to know who has the hope. Who has the hope? Jesus Christ is our hope. We need to be that church that rallies one, around one another and encourages one another to have the belief and the reception of the peace and joy of Christ, because in that place, we will have hope. In order for this year to be a great year, let it be full of hope. Let's join in unity together as a church, as a collective capital C church, in Christ's peace, in his joy, in the understanding of his word. Let, it, let us not be a church quick to try and cut another one down. Let us be quick to invite the person that we have differing opinions in. And let this be the year that no matter what happens in the political climate, no matter what happens 
within our government, no matter what happens with here, even in America or the greater world, no matter what happens, we will not lose our hope. We will be a people that stand firm on the word of God, that he has called us to such a time as this, to live up, to live in accordance to his plan, to not give in to the temptation to allow fear to overcome us, but instead we will be a church that stands firm in the truth that God is a good God, that he is righteous, that he has a good plan, and that it is his word that will stand the test of time, and that in him we have already been made victorious. Do you receive that today, church? Come on, I believe that God has best for us this year of 2022. So let me pray a blessing over you, and then I want for you today to go and encourage those around you that this doesn't have to be the year that we just throw out these hopeless resolutions. This can be the year that is rooted in hope, but let's do this God's way rather than the world's way. Father God, I thank you so much for every person who's watching this uh, broadcast today. Lord, would you just invade their space right now? Would your Holy Spirit come and enrapture them with your love, with your peace, and with your joy? And Father, I thank you that today we are making a decision that we will no longer put our hope in things that are going to die with this earth, that we will continue to put our hope in Christ Jesus, that this is the year that we will not waver, but Father, would you come and bring strength to our bones, strength in our faith, strength within our midst. God, would you allow for there to be a mighty move of your presence in the church, that we can be the example to those around us that we have been in disagreement with, those that we looked at as the Gentiles, would you change our hearts, soften our heart, and, and remind us that it's not about being quick to oppose, it's about being quick to invite. And so, Lord, we trust you today. We praise you, and we thank you in advance that this year can be an incredible year, no matter what happens, because our hope is in you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. I love you guys so much. I know that if Jess was here with me right now, that she would uh, back me up in saying this, that it has been an honor to serve alongside you for the last five and a half years. This next coming week on January 9th is gonna be my last Sunday, and I would just so love to just say hi and thank you and goodbye to all of you. So would you please come and join us next week, uh, January 9th at Da Vinci High School so that we can uh, have just a moment to just love on you guys and just tell you thank you so much for everything that you've done for Jess and I over the last five and a half years, for me over the last five and a half years. It's been amazing. And so we love you dearly, and uh, I believe that this is going to be the best year yet. Come on. Take care, guys.